Parliamentary Updates. The latest art exhibition at the Rotunda Gallery at the Red House took the theme Healing Through Art, making mental health and well-being for all a global priority. Art has been both an outlet to deal with and a means to raise awareness of mental health. And so, the Office of the Parliament invited artists to create artwork to help move towards a mentally healthier and sound society. Speaker of the House of Representatives, the Honorable Bridget Anisette George welcomed all to the exhibition launch, which puts a spotlight on the effect of stress and trauma on human mental health. The objective of this exhibition is twofold. One, to raise awareness of mental health and well-being. And two, to provide a stream of hope through constructive creative expression. I hasten to state, though that through our advocacy of the healing properties of art and creative expression, it's in no way being advanced as a panacea. This is certainly not to diminish the extensive work in the various fields and discipline that has to be done across the spectrum of mental health awareness and understanding. Although Mental Health Day is observed on October 10th, Madam Speaker informed attendees that the Office of the Parliament chose to celebrate the entire month. Because while we think a day is laudable, we felt that it's imperative that we play our role in reinforcing mental health awareness by doing it for a longer period. Particularly because in our society, we historically dismiss symptoms of mental or wellness with the casual statement, he or she mad. Additionally, the COVID-19 pandemic was not simply an assault on our physical health. Its consequential impact on our economies, restrictions on human interaction, and our freedom of movement, the fear, the panic, the overriding uncertainty in every sphere of life have all severely impacted mental health. No strata of human society can realistically claim that it has not been psychologically and emotionally affected by the pandemic. Madam Speaker said persons must pay attention to the symptoms of mental health just as they would to their physical health. But signals such as changes in sleeping patterns, loss of appetite, impulsive decision making, turning to drugs or alcohol in moments of distress, and suicidal thoughts may go unnoticed or be trivialized and not be appreciated as symptoms that our mental health is being challenged. It is important that we are educated about our mental health for our failure to care for our mental health or to take it for granted could negatively impact our ability to work, to build healthy relationships, and may end in our death. Having recognized the symptoms, it is also important for all of us to feel comfortable to seek help. And help comes in various forms, from improving our work-life balance, engaging in exercise, developing our creative expression to seek in professional and medical help. Zeroing in on Trinidad and Tobago, Madam Speaker said citizens are starting to access help. In a Loop TT article of September 9, 2022, our own Professor Gerard Hutchinson, Head of Psychiatry at the NCRHA, in commenting on the work of the Stress Relief Center stated that, and I quote, since its opening in 2018, more than 6,000 people have sought assistance at the center, which provides members of the public who are having difficulties coping with the debilitating effects as a result of relationships, work, sexuality, school, abuse, and other traumatic experiences with an opportunity to seek professional help." End of quote. Recently, our headlines featured the dastardly consequences that can result when women suffer from postpartum depression. 
We all have to play our part in promoting mental health in our society. It calls for individual, community, and institutional action. I commend the work of NGOs in our society, which do human service in the field of advocacy and support, such like MindWise, which has collaborated with us in the hosting of this exhibition. Chief Operations Officer of MindWise Project, Mr. Arnaldo James, told us about the non-governmental organization. Our mission is to improve access to trusted mental health services here in Trinidad and Tobago. So amongst our projects is findcarett.com and we're working on a number of other things on the ground. We're really just advocates for good mental health. Mr. James explained their current collaboration with the Parliament. MindWise project, we've collaborated with the Rotunda um, here in the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, along with the Pan American Health Organization, who've also, it's this collaboration and celebration of uh, World Mental Health Day, which we've expanded into World Mental Health Month. Uh, and uh, it's really a bringing together of artists centering on this idea of art as a therapeutic practice as everyone is impacted by mental health. So it's really my co-director, Maria O'Brien, who I think first bridged the connection between the Pan American Health Organization, the Rotunda Gallery here, uh, because our work as a non-profit organization is fundamentally like keeping the discussion and expanding uh, awareness around mental health concerns. He stressed the importance of observing World Mental Health Day. Everyone is impacted by mental health, so it's important overlaps in every aspect you can think about. From the workplace, there's no having a workforce if people aren't mentally resilient. Uh, in our day-to-day, -day, just walking the street, there is no like way of existing in your day-to-day -day life if people around you aren't healthy and if you yourself uh, don't have access to health. And so, uh, it's important to draw focus on this because I think at times we can get distracted and lapse on our own both self-care but also community care. So it's a, it really is just like a moment to remind ourselves that our mental health matters and that we have to do as much as possible uh, to ensure that we're taking care of ourselves and each other. The Parliament Channel spoke with some of the exhibitors about their work. It's called How Can I Help My Brother? Um, I think I stated that it, it, the question kind of goes two ways because you tend to find, at least I tend to find that with people who, are, who have some sort of mental health issue, they find them sometimes in a state where they feel that they can help you. You know, they always want to try and explain everything to you about what they think things are. So. It's kind of like the person looking at you from the painting is asking you that, but the truth is, and because he's asking you that, the question goes to you as well, well how, how can I really help my brother, you know? And the whole community and families find it very tough to deal with uh, mental health people, you know? And with this in particular, it is a personal piece of a friend who I, can, who I consider a brother, you know, and it's just very hard. It's very hard dealing. I love him too bad, you know, I love him. And it's, it's, it's hard to see people go in that direction where you yourself find it uh, futile to even think that you can understand what they're going through to even try to help, you know. I think it's important because, I mean, if I am to say honestly, I think everybody need have a, a bit mentally unstable, yeah, just, that's just how life is, you know. We all have our issues, but I think the earliest I can remember having to deal with it is when I was younger and seeing, I was fortunate to still have like my great aunts and uncles still around, you know, my grandmother, sisters and brothers, and seeing them reach the age to go to Alzheimer's. Yeah, you know, and that for me was, as a young, young person, was very strange and to see somebody normal and then turn into something else, you know. I say once a man, twice a child, they go back to that, you know. And then to see it, when I got older, to see it with some friends and young, younger people now, you know. Um, it's just very touching. Um, 
to compose this piece, I was really inspired to kind of heal through my journey with my body image issues and body dysmorphia. That's what really inspired me for this piece. I would like to say it took me a week because I did each each element of the piece in different parts. So it was a journey. It, I didn't know where it was going to end up, but I just kind of started and then I kept building on it. I think it's very important because it helps others to heal as well as it helps to destigmatize mental health, especially in the Caribbean where it is so stigmatized. So I think it's a very important day to celebrate because it helps to gain awareness about mental health issues as well as it helps others to heal their mental health issues that they may be experiencing. Well, it's a personal inspiration. So when I was in university, I was overexerting myself over a, a, a number of things to the point where I was kind of breaking down. And I wanted to portray that visually to kind of also get my feelings out into a tangible form. I think it's very important, like mental health, because it helps us to actually function in day to day. Because I struggle with mental health a lot, with anxiety and depression and stuff. And in order for me to get by, I need to take care of my mental health. So I think it's very, very important. Will mental health day? I think it's important too because it helps you to to remember that how important mental health is and to actually to take care of yourself. That's why to my artwork, I, I create to help people as well because I know a lot of people don't know how to tell their stories and I think my work could resonate with a lot of people so they could feel like they're not alone. So I think the day as well too will help other people to, to feel like they're not alone as well too, yeah. The two pieces that I have being exhibited today, they're basically supposed to fit the theme of mental illness and I basically wanted to express, you know, the different ways that people struggle with mental illness through visual representation. So the both pieces represent that, exactly that, but they represent different uh, mental illnesses though. This one is suffering with um, depression and schizophrenia and the other one is more of an individual suffering with, you know, a multiple personality disorder. And yeah, that's basically what they're both supposed to represent through expression and visual representation. I feel like it's very important because we need to be able to recognize that people suffer with different mental illnesses. And when we celebrate days like this, we're able to, you know, understand and realize. And when we understand and realize, we're then able to help those that suffer with them. And when we're able to suffer, then there's, you know, more understanding and there's hope for the people that are suffering. There's hope for the people feeling that they can't have help and they can now feel as though they're receiving the attention they deserve. They're feeling, you know, more comfortable with the people they're around because people are now aware of what they're suffering with. What really inspired me for this art is that thinking about COVID, COVID is like, it's like a stressful, stressful thing for a lot of people, right? Um, you know, just by thinking of that, uh, in the midst of stillness, I just happened to get it taught. And it, that thought happened to turn into words and turn into action. So I just happened to paint this particular piece that, you know, to bring a peace and bring a, you know, you can see pieces of that, but you can see a story out of it, a story, you're telling a story, right? So when, 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 when the viewers look at it, is a story being told. Well. To be is to celebrate is that is that you know you, you come to a place where you know where you could bring things into balance. Right? You bring things into balance by you know taking time out to really relax yourself, be in a place of stillness, a place of meditation. All this is a part of bringing your mind stable and steadfast to me. Eh? Right? And, um, so this, this is something that you could, you could come out of. People could come out of. You could come out of this pandemic. But you had to mean you have your mind stable. Okay? And at peace. First of all, I must thank, I must thank my family. And plus two, I must thank Rotunda for expressing, for allowing me to express my painting here. Alright? Um, because we are all born to express. We all want to exhibit the hidden potential of every one of us. You see, you see a lot of artists around, different ages, different groups, everything. 
and we, they, we are born to express. So they're expressing all the different types of techniques that are the, even the unlocking these things. So I, I thank God for Rotunda for allowing me to unlock. The Rotunda Gallery exhibitions are aimed at helping artists on the rise exhibit their work in a safe and unique space and for more established artists who frequently exhibit as well. This new exhibition runs from 17th October to 4th November 2022 and is open Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Stay tuned for more parliamentary updates. For more information, visit our website at www.ttparliament.org and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram. Parliamentary Updates